I'm Alex Heath. I'm the president and CEO of Prospector Metals Corp. Prospector is an exploration company with a portfolio of district scale opportunities located in some of Canada's most prospective mining jurisdictions. Alex, good to see you. It's been far too long. October, I think it was. Um, yeah. you've, been, you've been quite busy. I've noticed uh, name change. Uh, let's start with that. Why? Yeah, so we actually did quite a few things in the last, uh, call it you know, three, four months since we last spoke. Uh, one of the things that I think fundamentally changes the company's direction is that our what was our advisor on the technical side, Rob Carpenter, has now come on as co-chairman. So that's one of the first pieces of the puzzle. He's much more involved. He's one of our largest shareholders, and he's going to be steering the ship here. At the same time, we've gotten Discovery Group, which is you know an alliance of public companies. You've probably heard of some of the companies like Kodiak or Great Bear, which just got taken over by Kinross. We've got the, the two founders of that, Jim Peterson and John Robbins, more involved. Uh, they just came into the placement, which we just announced. So that's another piece of the puzzle was a, very, a small $3 million financing. And the last piece was a consolidation of our shares on a three to one basis. So we're, we're changing the name of the company. We're boosting up the, the advisory uh, positions of John and Jim. Uh, we've added Rob Carpenter as chairman and we've rolled back the shares. Right, I mentioned the why though. Because sometimes when people do the name change, there's to cover up a multitude of sins and hopefully people will forget. Why have you done it? Why did you feel the need to do it? Yeah, so we felt the need to do it because the company has been around for over a decade. And, you know, we had about 150 million shares outstanding. We were about to launch a drill program on our, our, our flagship project in Newfoundland. And then we got permits for our Savant Lake project and we're, we're very close to getting another permit on our battery metals project in Ontario. So we felt now was the time, might as well do it all at once and just restart. Right, okay. So there's a, the kind of, it's been around in one shape or other in, for the last 10, 15 years, old story, small company, preconception, this is the moment where you needed to, you felt you need to shake things up? Is that, is, that, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, we felt it was a bit of a Frankenstein company where, you know, there are assets that were brought in in the U.S., in the Yukon, in, in B.C., in Mexico. And it wasn't really a, a well thought out strategy. Now that we've got, you know, Rob Carpenter fully involved, we've we've come down to what is our strategy and uh, and much more focused. So, you know, the idea here is that we we have a portfolio of projects, a pipeline of grassroots exploration projects, but they have great geology. We don't know which one's going to hit, but we advance them. If we don't see the results that we think are significant enough because we're, we're looking for home runs, we drop the project. I mean, it's it's very mercenary, but that's the idea here. We're looking for a big discovery. No, and I, I, I like that. I like that ideology. Um, but because it, it kind of kind of felt like before ethos a uh, former comp company name ethos gold uh felt like a, the, these projects were sort of dumping ground for the discovery group where you just kind of like well we'll park that in there until we work out what we what we do with it so have you just been through a process because when we spoke last time there's nine projects we could have talked about right yeah. we did focus on yeah. three of them but there were nine projects in here so when you say oh we're going to be a little bit more mercenary i will very quickly decide whether they meet our criteria. Can you explain to me what that criteria is? Yes, absolutely. So when we acquire a project, in our case, these are greenfield or grassroots exploration projects, we advance them for probably under a million dollars, $500,000 or so. It's, it's prospecting, it's sort of V10 electromagnetics. And if we don't see anything in that, if there's not an anomaly or if we're finding you know, outcrops of low grade materials and we're not hitting a certain threshold, you know, because these are all or generally our option agreements and we get to the the one year mark we have to make a cash payment or a share payment you know if it doesn't meet that threshold it's a tough decision so we have to think about whether it's good enough or it doesn't meet it we drop it because like you said we see lots of projects come in through discovery group so there's always going to be another project kind of filling in the gap and there's no point in us wasting shareholders money on projects that we don't think are going to pan out Long term. And what do you that do? Being said, what do you do with them, though? I mean, are they literally go? It's it's a net zero sum game here. I say we'll spend a million bucks, half a million bucks, whatever. Uh, not meeting our threshold, we just get rid of it. We park it up or let it fade away. Would you sell it? We could. It really depends on what we've seen. I mean, sometimes when you drill a project, you kill it. But other times, maybe it's okay, but it doesn't meet our internal threshold of what we want to see. And in that case, there may be a company that 
would be interested. Maybe they've got a project nearby and, you know, a half million ounce deposit might make sense in, when you've got two of them in close proximity. So in that case, we would just try to vend it off and get some shares or a royalty or, or what have you. But it's not really our, our game plan. We're not a prospect generator. This isn't the game to sort of advance and then sell. It's really to advance, make a discovery. Okay. Before we get on to the assets proper, I just want to talk about some of the other things you, you chose to do at the same time, which is obviously the rollback, three to one rollback. Um, again, you know, if you're in Australia, it kind of like, who cares? Billion shares, no problem. Four billion shares, no problem. In Canada, it seems to matter more. People look to that as an indicator of the health of the company. I mean, is, is was that your concern? Did you want to wholesale change yeah. and everything? Yeah, th this was kind of the advice that we'd gotten from certain shareholders, uh, from, from our advisors that were kind of saying, listen, take a look at what happened with Great Bear back in the day. They were, you know, three cents stock. They did a rollback. Kodiak did the same thing in 2020. In fact, if you look at how we did our, our financing rollback name change, it's a cookie cutter model of what Kodiak did. So that's kind of the idea is if you're about to launch a new program, rebrand the company, restart, do it all at once, rip the bandaid off and get it over with. Right. Okay. 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 Better, better get on to the projects proper then. Obviously, the, the I think the three primary ones last time, um, top of the pile was um, the Newfoundland project. It was very topical back then. Um, what's the reality of how that's panned out for you over at Too Good? Yeah, Too Good to us is definitely our flagship project right now. So we acquired the land in 2020 and we assembled five different properties to come up with a 180 square kilometer package. Uh, when we first got our team on the ground, right away we had bonanza grades, but these were grab samples. So I don't want to, you know, overemphasize high grade because it's selective. But but what we saw from that is we've traced it back to outcropping quartz veins, and that's where we really the rubber is going to hit the road. Is you know we see gold in the quartz veins, but what's the average width? What's the average grade? And and drilling is the only way that you're going to know. Right. I'm glad you said that because I think there was a lot of hype, you know, off the back of a, a you know, a couple of companies in Newfoundland doing well. I think everyone was piling in. We, we had lots of companies coming talking to us about their Newfoundland land packages. Uh, no money, no real data, but it was going to be the next big thing, right? You suffered from a little bit of that. I think you got obviously with, with Crest Cat's involvement and then Quentin Henning mentioning the, the, the project in one of the podcasts, it kind of took off and took a, you know, cre created a, a profile for you, which looked really super, super exciting, but it wasn't based on much, right? How do you sort of temper that kind of more pr promotional approach w versus the kind of more sober discovery group way of doing things. You're about to start a drill program in May. So what can we expect to see from you? Because um, I don't think that kind of spike in uh, excitement helped you, quite frankly. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, high expectations uh, cause problems for companies, right? So uh, for, for us, we have to be very systematic about we, how we advance exploration. So you know, when you see companies promoting, they got visible gold in the core. What does that even mean? I mean, is it a, a, a good width? What is the grade? And, and, you know, what is the tenure of that gold? So, you know, I'm glad to have three PhD geologists on our team. And, you know, the, we had uh, Jody Gibson, who is Yukon Explorer of the Year. He's advising us on this project. So I rely on my experts to tell me, you know, the truth versus the promotion. And how do we find things? Because 7,800 grams per ton, everyone's very excited. And it is exciting because, you know, high grade gold deposits don't have to be huge. They can be very small. And we're seeing that with Newfound Gold. They've kind of reignited interest in Newfoundland because of the grade. So grade is king in this case. And we are seeing high grades in, in the areas that we're looking. So, but we won't really know until the drill starts turning. And we're going to find out very quickly. So what we're going to be doing about 2,500 meters of drilling. These are pretty shallow holes because we're right on surface. Like the gold is right outcropping. And we'll be stepping out five meter increments because uh, like Quentin Hennig said, you know, he, he's got some experience in these high grade gold deposits. Um, you can miss it if you step out too far and, and you could be missing hundreds of thousands of ounces. So the goal here is, is really step out five meter increments, step back and, and really hit it and see what comes out of the core. And if, if it doesn't pan out and we're talking, the expectations are plus 10 grams per ton. If we don't see that, it, it's gonna be back to sort of our thinking caps and what do we do? Do we spend another million dollars on the project or do we reallocate that capital to our other projects? 
So that's really going to be the battle that we have in the next two, three months. Well, I guess it's a, it's a battle of, you know, can you continue, continue to raise capital to do this journey? Cause it's, I mean, those step outs are incredible in five meters. It's, it's, it's unusual, I, I guess, more, more generically, but in the case of Newfoundland and what we've seen at Newfoundland Gold is that they, they've had to do this just to be able to track these super high grades with, you know, very narrow, uh, widths. And yeah. you, you can, you can lose that. You, you, you can waste a lot of money. So it's a very kind of slow process in terms of, um, building answers. So, Lots of money, lots of time to do it. But if you look at newfound loan, newfound gold, they, they seem to have cracked the code in terms of telling that story to the market where, where others haven't. Um, do you, th- how, how do you think you're going to have to play this? Are you, you going to use that? Are you talking about cookie cutter? Are you going to use that as a cookie cutter approach to how you do this? Or if you give them Quinton's uh, involvement or have you got other plans? No, I think we, we pretty much need to find out right away. All right, we're going to be drilling right where we saw some of this very high grades, 7,800 gram per ton is not too far away from where we found the quartz vein. So, you know, in my mind, if we hit five meter increments and we're drilling underneath this vein and we're not seeing, uh, you know, decent grades of gold, to me, that's an indication that maybe it's not there. Um, but if we do hit, that's a different story. And we would sort of reallocate capital. Maybe we, we, we delay some of the other projects. But I think at this point, it, it, it's really, we won't know until we start drilling. Right. Okay. And in terms of the decision making, right? So you, you can plan two, two and a half thousand meters, but the, I, is it going to be slower drilling in the sense that you need to see what you've got before you make decisions as to where, where to go next in terms of ch- chasing these veins? Or have you got a time frame in which you think you can get the two and a half thousand meters done? Yeah, that's a good question. So we'll start obviously with our, our most prospective uh, area. So we've got two, we've got Quinlan and Titan. I think Titan is the one that has the very, very high grade. So obviously we'd start there. And what we're going to do oriented core as well, so we can see which direction it's going. And so that will definitely help. You know, if the first few holes, we, we see a different orientation in terms of what we interpret, then we will adjust on the fly. But I think for the most part, it's really, you know, you, you have your thesis and if your thesis doesn't pan out, you don't go in and, and shift gears 180 degrees. So how do you go about tracing this stuff? Because I, th- I think one of, one of the accusations thrown at people like uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland Gold is the, the fact that it's very ve- ve- veiny deposit, right? So we've got super high grade, but, you know, very veiny in, in, in terms of where it's just distributed amongst the, the, the ore body. How do you use things like, you know, mag surveys or... Yeah, all, all of those kind of all that kind of um, broader, more more generic approach to understanding what you think you've got underground versus just the pure, you know, through the drill beds. I mean, how, how do you balance that that knowledge? What do you, what are you what are you putting down the holes to try and understand what's under there? Yeah. So um, the honest answer for me is that I rely on my experts, and and this is what's great about being part of Discovery Group is that I've got enough guys on my team that I've learned from past experience, from past mistakes. So I would lean heavily on Rob Carpenter and, and Jody Gibson and, and uh, you know Joe Price to sort of tell me what is it that they're seeing. And in a lot of cases, there's pretty healthy debate on this, right? Because they've, they've all got their own experiences and they're all going to bring up different you know, cases that they've seen in the past. But, but, you know, we will be using those tools, you know, like you said, mag surveys and EM and what have you. So, right. Okay. I guess it'd be interesting. Maybe you can come back on with one, one, um, with, with Rob or, or, or whomever and, you know, talk to our tech guy. And so, so we just, so I think it's really interesting to understand because it's all well and good, you know, finding these high grade answers in the ground, but you've got to find enough of them to kind of build a resource out and you've got to find an, enough of them in a way that you can get out of the ground economically, right? So do you know what I mean? So you, there's a certain way that you've got to go about it. It would be really interesting to try and understand that. Um, okay, so so drilling starting, two and a half thousand meters. So how much money is that in dollars? It'll be about a million dollars. Okay, okay. So, okay, so you're not, you're not, you're not blowing, blowing, um, blowing everything out of the water on that. So what's, what's next in the priority then? Which asset? So we, we just got a permit for our Savant project in Ontario. This is a, an iron formation gold project. Yeah. Uh, very high grade. Rob Carpenter actually wrote his PhD on a similar project. So there's structural similarities between Savant and Meliodine, which is the project he wrote his PhD on. Mm-hmm. And so that one will be advancing also in May, but not drilling right away. We've got to do a little bit more work to sort of define some of our drill targets. Uh, but we do have a permit and that one will probably be, you know, September timeframe to start drilling. 
Right. And what are you, what are you chasing there? Uh, this would be a, a gold, um, right. know, a gold project as well. More gold. Yeah. Right. What's, what's number three on the list? Number three or, or two is sort of a debate because we'll be drilling this one first. It's, it's actually a, what I call a battery metals play. It's a nickel, copper, platinum group elements project in Ontario. It's called Witten Lake. Yep. Uh, this project's actually 20 kilometers away from an operating nickel, copper, platinum group element project. And this one came through Rob Carpenter. He was looking at a map of Ontario and he sort of found this area that had open ground. And then he cross-referenced it with, you know, a geological survey that had been done where there was, you know, low grade nickel copper on surface. So we sent our geologists in there. We spent about $400,000 and lo and behold, we have this large uh, anomaly, electromagnetic anomaly. We've got sulfide grades on surface nickel copper. Um, and there's this depression and a lake. This is where Witten Lake actually comes from is something is, is coinciding with that EM anomaly that's three and a half kilometers long without cropping nickel copper. So this is potentially a pretty sizable uh, target for us. So that one will be drilling in July. Right, it's a bit of gold, bit of battery metals, nickel copper, platinum, palladium. Um, Again, so what were the budgets on the on sorry on on Savant Lake and um and Wooden Lake? I would say each each one is about a million dollars. Right. Okay. And you've done, you've done a raise yeah. you've done a raise recently of about just under three point five million on the private placement. Yeah. Um, so what, what's that put the total cash position out for you guys now? So our cash position, we'd have about four four and a half million dollars. Okay. And on top of that, on top of that, we actually have some shares of other companies uh, to the tune of about four million dollars of uh, marketable securities. Right. And. You, uh, sorry, who are they with? So it's just understand. Like, literally, if you, right. are, are they are they liquid? Would you be able to get They're, rid of them quickly? So our largest position, which is about three million of the four, is Nevada King Gold. Right. We got that. We had a project in, in Nevada called Iron Point. We had a 50 50 joint venture with Nevada King. Right. We vended it back to them and they gave us shares. Right. Okay. But they probably wouldn't thank you for dumping stock in the market if, if you needed to. No, we would definitely. I mean, it's such a large position that we would communicate with them. We wouldn't just, you know, right. hit the market. Okay. So, so I guess like, you know, in, in, um, for this conversation, it's, hey, it's all change. We've got a plan. We've got some people who kind of have been in the team, but sort of stepping up and taking a more active role here. They've invested themselves. Always good to hear. Um, and we're going to start a drill program on our primary project, T Good, which is, Good news, and we'll be drilling later on the other two, on the other two projects later in the year. Is that that is that what we're hearing? Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And will you come back on and get a little bit technical with us next time in terms of when you start actually? Say, I mean, how 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 are things there? We've seen you know varying degrees of ability to get assays done quickly. We've got people saying, "Oh, we're okay. We're you know six to eight weeks," and other people saying, "It's eight months." How are you guys? Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot better. I think last year there was a multitude of problems that happened. There was, you know, obviously COVID was one of the biggest, you know, uh, problems with, with with just having the amount of people in the labs that, that sort of limited the capacity. And then there was just a, a, a huge amount of, of uh, drill results coming through. So, you know, I think those have kind of come down a little bit, uh, and that should help us out, especially in Newfoundland. Right. Okay. Well, I guess that's the one everyone, the, the one everyone's going to get most excited about, or should be getting most excited about. I'm actually quite excited about your your battery stuff um, in terms of what you're going to be able to able to do there. So, what's the what's the what's the timing on on starting work on that again? Sorry, that one would be in the summer, so probably around July. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And if and if how do you, how do you get this balance right? Because you, you you know you can't you can't have lots of children given where you're at at the moment. You can you expect one of these three to hit for you at least one of these three to hit for you, I should say. Right? If all three hit, nice problem to have. But what what does how does the group deal with that? Do they say we'll spin one out? We'll we'll be a gold company and we'll spin the the battery stuff out? Or what? that's a great question, and you know we haven't really put a lot of thought into it. At least not a lot of time. Um, I think if we hit on all three, which is unlikely, but if we were to hit on all three, I think we would think about spinning them out or at least dividending out to shareholders. The, you know, the battery metals, because it's such a different uh, commodity, it probably has the higher valuation. You know, I haven't done all the work, so I'm, I'm just sort of speaking theoretically here. I would probably spin it out into a separate vehicle and, and finance that separately. Right. Okay. But for now, you've got the capital you want to kind of get through this, get through the programs that you have planned for this year, no more cash raises this year, right? 
Yeah, right now we we wouldn't need any more capital, but you know we might be opportunistic if uh, someone comes along. We had that happen before Eric Sprott showed up and gave us two million dollars that we couldn't say no to. So, <laughs> make, is that the horse's head? Make you an offer you can't yeah. refuse. Uh, hey, well, like, like Alex, like, good, good to catch up. Thanks for sort of just checking in with us, saying like, like we, it's uh, we've got a, got a new program here, um, new focus, sort of new team, effectively. Um, stay in touch. Let us know how you get on. Okay. Absolutely.